Hello, welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In the last video, we set up a basic message port and used Python's built in threading module to send emails to subscribers. In this video, we will see how we can set up Celery to handle this task. Since Celery requires a message broker to work, we will also install Redis. Celery, in combination with a message broker, offers more robust features, such as distributing tasks to multiple worker nodes and monitoring tools. But before we get started, a quick shout out to my new supporters on Patreon. A high five to Augustin and to Yu Feng. Thank you so much for your support, I really appreciate it. And now, without further ado, let's dive in. So what is Celery? Celery is a distributed task queue system for Python that helps offload tasks to a message broker and then execute it by Celery workers. Let me illustrate that using a workflow. So a Django application, for example, wants to offload the sending of multiple emails or a scheduled task like a weekly newsletter to a separate application. Here is where Celery comes in. Celery comprises of two major components. First, we have the message broker, which manages the task queue. In this project, we're using Redis for this. However, you can also use another popular service, RabbitMQ, which includes more advanced messaging features and is suited for larger and more complex applications, while Redis, on the other hand, is more lightweight, easier to set up and faster. And the second component is the pool of workers, which executes the task asynchronously. They are responsible for consuming the tasks from the message broker, executing them and then possibly storing the results to result storage. For the result storage we can use Redis again or we can use our Postgres database where we can easily inspect the results using Django's admin interface. So this is basically the salary workflow in a nutshell. Let's implement it now. So first let's install Redis. Installing Redis on Linux is straightforward, since it is developed for Unix-based environments. If you're on Windows, you can install Redis using the Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL. And if you're on a Mac, like myself, an easy way to install Redis is with Homebrew, a package manager for macOS. If Homebrew is not yet installed on your machine, head over to the official website and grab here the installation command. Then I go to my project and paste the command in here. Homebrew needs access to my computer, so I provide here the password. Press enter. Alright, Homebrew is now installed. We can check that with brew dash dash version. And we can see here the Homebrew version. With Homebrew we can now install Redis. With Brew install Redis. Alright, Redis is now installed. We can also check this with Brew services info Redis. With this command we can see if Redis is installed and also if it is up and running. At the moment it is not running yet. One option to run Redis is with the command redis-server. With this option Redis is running in a standalone mode at port 6379. We will need this port number later when we connect with Django. But I will run Redis as a background service and manage it with Homebrew. And the command to start Redis with Homebrew is brew services start Redis. Alright, Redis is now running in the background. Let's have a look. Again with brew services in for Redis. And as we can see, it is now loaded and running. Awesome! 
Now that Redis is running, we can also access the Redis CLI if you want to interact with the server. Redis-CLI. And here, if we type ping, Redis will respond with Pong, telling us the service is operational. So with this CLI, we could inspect and manage data stored in the Redis database. However, we don't need it right now, so I exit the CLI with Ctrl C. OK. Next, let's connect Django with Redis. For this, I need to install the Redis package, so Django and Redis can talk to each other. With pip install Redis. OK, and then we also install Celery, which will use Redis as a message broker. pip install Celery. All right, and now let's add the configuration to our settings.py file, which is in the core folder, settings.py, and here at the very bottom, I add here the salary broker URL, which is pointing to our local Redis instance at localhost with the port number 6379. Alright, save this file. And next we add the salary configuration file to set up salary. You can also check out the official salary documentation online for this. In the contents here we find a section for Django and then using Celery with Django. So here you can also find a step-by-step -step guide. So first we create a Celery.py file in our main folder. So in the core folder I create a new file, Celery.py. Then first we import OS. Then from Celery we import the Celery class. With this line we tell Django to use the settings file in our core folder. Then we create an instance of the Celery class and add the name of our main app folder as the argument, which in my project is a underscore core. And this line loads the configuration settings under the namespace salary. And finally, we call the auto discover tasks function, which finds tasks in our Django project which have the shared task decorator. We will see how this works in a second. Alright, this is all for this file. Let's save it. And then we need to import this app in our init.py module. This ensures that the app is loaded when Django starts. We go to the init.py file in the core folder. Here we import the salary app we just created. And this line makes sure the salary app is imported when Django starts. OK, save this file. And now we can create our first task. So I'm going to my message board folder. I create a new file and call it tasks.py. Here I am importing the shared task decorator. With this decorator, Celery can find the task in our project. And here I'm adding now my send mail function. So I copy the function we created in the last video, which is in the views.py. Here is the function we sent the email with, so I copy this code and add it in here. Let's rename it to send email task. I also import email message. And with this we have our first task. OK, save this file. Now let's go to our views. And here we call this function. But first let's import it. So from tasks import everything. 
Then I'm comment out the threading code we used in the previous video. This code will be replaced now with celery. Then I add here the send email function. And to call this function asynchronously, I add the delay method. With this method, Celery adds the function to the task queue. And inside the parentheses, I add the subject, body and the subscriber object as the arguments. OK, save this file. Now we have our email function set up. Celery is configured. Redis is connected and running. And the last piece of the puzzle is to run a Celery worker. Celery. Dash A stands for application, and we add here the name of our core folder, in my case A underscore core, and worker. This command, however, might not run on Windows, because of pre-forking, which defines how a pool of workers work together. But pre-forking is not compatible with Windows, so there are several options to resolve this. So one option is to run a single worker with the dash p option, which stands for pool, and then solo. This option is great for low workloads, but for higher workloads you might need more workers. So the second option is to run multiple tasks simultaneously in separate threads. Or you could also use the g event option, which can handle a high number of concurrent tasks. And there is always the option to run the Celery Worker on WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux. OK, we have another command to run a worker, and I run it now. Great, the Celery Worker is running now. However, we see some warning messages here, which are related to a configuration regarding the message broker connection on startup. We can get rid of those warnings by adding a line in our settings .py file. We're adding this line, celery broker connection retry on startup and set it to true. OK, save this file. Then I shut down the worker with Ctrl C. Then I add here again my salary worker command, but I extend it now with logging info options. The dash E option enables the task events to be monitored. And dash L info means lock the information when executing the task. And as we can see, we have no more warning messages. The task events option is switched on, and we see here the task Celery has found in our project. Alright, we let this worker now run in a separate terminal, and we open a new one here. And start the application with python manage to py run server. Alright. Let's try now to post a new message and see if Celery sends the email. I refresh the page and add a new message. Celery test. But we got an error here. And it says here the object of type user is not JSON serializable which typically means that the application tries to convert a object into a JSON string. So the problem is here in the view, when we try to send the subscriber object to the send email task. So instead of sending the whole object, we actually only need the email, as a string. So I change this to dot .email. OK, and then we also have to update the salary task. We get here the email. and send it to this email. All right, save this file. And now we also have to restart the worker, so the changes are reflected there too. As we can see, we have some errors here, but they should disappear after the restart. So, Ctrl C, 
then again the salary worker command and test it again. Salary test 2 and great, the message was posted. Let's check now in the inbox if we got the email. And indeed, we got the new message now from Lucy Salary Test 2. Awesome! And the salary worker also locked the information about the task he ran. So we can see here the task ID, the succeeded status, and the time it took to execute. Alright, we set up now a basic salary task queue system. And this is all for this video. But before I wrap up, I will just shut down Redis. Because Redis would just keep running forever, even after restart. And the command to shut down Redis with homebrew is brew services stop Redis. Alright, Redis has successfully stopped. Mission complete. In the next video we will dive deeper how we can monitor those tasks and add a result storage. I hope to see you there. Until then, happy coding my friends and bye bye for now.